What's up guys? Welcome back to Build the Spark. We got a different environment today. We're taking you to our back porch. Um, hope you enjoy yourself out here as much as we do. And today I just wanted to share a brief message with you on what the Lord's been kind of teaching me and what he's been walking me through and just showing me uh, throughout scripture, especially the basics of the basics that the other day I was just reading and it blew my mind. I was like, really? How did I miss this? Um, I've read this scripture over and over again and I just missed it and um just in case you're like me and you missed it i'd love to share this revelation that god's given to me which is pretty elementary but at the same point it's so essential because it just shifts um our entire outlook on god on what it means to be a christian and and kind of our responsibility so today we're going to be in exodus um chapter 20 and in verse 7 particularly but this is what this is this is the 10 commandments so we're talking about the 10 commandments which you all know but really, we're just going to focus on um, verse 7, but I'm going to read up to it. And uh, yeah, so welcome to my neighbor's life and all that. So here you go. So it says this, And God spake all these things, all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So we have this big um, introduction of God of these commandments. Firstly, that he is a holy God. And not only does he a holy God, but he's a jealous God, right? He is the one that, uh, why, how did they know that he was the holy God? He brought them out of Egypt. He was the one that pulled them out. And so he is worthy of worship, worthy to be, um, for us to serve him, worthy of us to love him because he shows up in our lives, right? And then he says, uh, because of that, don't make any graven images, right? Don't worship something that's not me. Don't put anything else in front of me is what he's saying here, like, uh, in today's world, we don't carve images so much, but we have images on TVs and music and our life. Just there's tons of stuff that we pour before the Lord um, that is not of Him that we put Him, and that's really where a lot of depression, anxiety, fear, doubt, uh, not stepping into things that we need to do because we're putting other things above the Lord instead of what the Lord is and putting Him above the things. So. This leads us into verse 7. When I read this the other day, I was like, whoa, how did I miss this? And so verse 7, commandment 3 says this. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to stop there um, and reflect on this. So if you're like me... Um, I've just taken this at face value from what people have told me over and over again that to take the Lord's name in vain is to not cuss, right? You don't want to say anything inappropriately about God or or use his name with with uh, just as a slanderous term or just to express disgust, right? So when you say the word God, you want to make sure that you are um, intentional about it. And that's kind of how I left it. For my entire life but what happened to me is i was like that just doesn't make sense there's this idea of taking right and i was like how are people drawing this conclusion of not using the lord's god to express disgust or or in vanity right this like a, a useless saying god help or whatever um which that just doesn't express the heart of the scripture whatsoever so remember the first ver the first commandment is i'm the lord of god um, who brought you out of Egypt, right? You shall have no other gods before me. And then second one, don't make any images of other things, right? So, and then thirdly, he points it back to us and he says, do not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, right? And so um, I'd love to introduce you to a tool right now that's really helped me out um, in my walk with Christ, in my walk with this, through this, uh, this Christian uh, and understanding the Bible. And so that is called Blue Letter Bible. If you don't have that app, go ahead and get that app. It is awesome. What it does is it allows you to walk through the original Hebrew for the Old Testament and the original Greek 
that these languages um, were written in, right? So, the, so the exact wordage of what was what it was in Hebrew. And so when you go to verse seven, right on uh, Exodus twenty, verse seven, it says the original Hebrew goes Lo Nasa et Sem Yehovah Elohim Sav Ki Lo Naka. Yehovah et and so on and so forth. So that's the order of the scripture and then it's got the definition of what that word means and you can click on it and it goes in. So uh, the direct translation of how the words look from right to left because that's how it's read, right? You've got, starts out with not thou shalt take. So we say do not take the Lord's name in vain but it's actually not thou shalt take is how it was originally, how their grammar structure works. But so the word thou shalt take is nasah right and for some reason we get this meaning of nasa as to not cuss or to look at but it actually means to bear or carry so do not carry the lord's god your name do not take uh do not lift up the lord your god's name right so that might be one thing right um the other thing is to bear continuously is another definition right to um even to be born of is a definition of this nasa, N-A-S-A. So when you read it with that lens, thou shalt not be born of the Lord God's name, right? And so when you, if you look into the New Testament, we see that when we uh, take Christ as our Savior, that we become adopted, right? We get the last name of God. That's what I always teach people, right? That that you're now a son, so you now inherited um, the last name, right? If I adopted a child, they would be uh, child parish, right? And so, so this changes the whole dynamic of how we look at the the Ten Commandments. If you looked at it the way I have your, my entire life, and that is, um, Commandment three is serious, right? Do not take the Lord God, your God's name, in vain, right? Do not bear the name of God on yourself. Do not say, "I'm a son of God." in vain and in vain so let's look back at what in vain means right so we did the first one now the word for vain and this is sav s-a-v right and that means an emptiness or nothingness or worthlessness so do not be born of the lord god your god in worthlessness so there's this high calling that god sets on the right of the stop is but i'm god don't make any images and do not bear my name in vain and in our culture, Christianity, which we all face, we're all, we can become very guilty of bearing the Lord God's name in vain, right? I'm a Christian, but there's nothing behind it, right? James says very fervently, and it's a beautiful verse that he says, show me your faith without works, and I'll show you my faith through my works, right? So we have a faith, so there is an absence of vanity, right? There's an absence of vain working, right? We have, we put purpose behind it. We don't just say I'm a Christian and then do nothing about it. We say I'm a Christian and so my whole life changes. My whole everything um, changes. I've got to do something about it because if not, I'm, I'm directly disobeying God's third commandment, which is the first, the second thing that we should do, right? Don't make any other gods and then don't take up my name in vanity. Um, and so, when you read that lens, right, with that idea of like, God is very serious, right? And he says in there as well, in verse seven, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. So you, if you're taking the Lord God's name in vain, right? But and with emptiness, with no meaning, with no, I'm just a child, I, I'm, but there, it means nothing to me. It doesn't change a thing. Then, then the Lord is gonna hold you guilty for that, right? And so, praise God there's grace upon grace about that but you've got to step into that grace right you've got to actually open up the gift and what it fully means so with that guys I just want to encourage you that um, a that if you're walking this out right there is grace upon grace upon it and uh, this I was also reading in Romans today Romans 4 where it's talking about why was Abraham considered righteous well because he had faith and he believed and what the Lord said, it had nothing to do with his actions, but it had everything to do with him being able to believe. He was counted righteous in Romans 4 because he believed because of his faith. And so the Christian religion, the Christianity, the Christ I know is all about faith. And so faith is believing what the scripture says. It's believing 
that what the Lord your God did for you, he actually did for you. The promises he put before you, he actually put before you, and then stepping into that. So he's telling you, be warned of not taking the Lord your God's name in vain, and instead really put your faith, put your trust, put your belief in everything who he is and everything that he is and everything that he has planned for you, and he will uphold you. We love you guys. God bless. Thank you so much for uh, the honor of, of teaching and, and walking with you. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm just going to pray us out. Um, God bless you on this Monday. Amen. All right. Father, we just thank you for hearts. God, we just thank you for your wisdom, how you are patient with us, how you continue to teach us the basics even as we grow old in you, God, and we, we come into mature, maturation, God. I just ask that you continue to, to mold hearts, to melt hearts of stone and put in your hearts of flesh. We just honor you, God, and what you're working in each person today and what you're doing. And I just thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless y'all.